up collectors p rockzilla back again for another review and today we're going to be taking a look at the 30 evangelion product model 2. so i'm going to be honest with you guys uh, there's going to be some figures here in my collection that i don't know anything about they're more of like an impulse impulse buy and this is one of them right here i don't know anything about the evangelion anime uh, the figure line the characters i just like the way the characters look i like the designs of the mechs um, I do, you know, follow a little bit. I know it's a kind of a confusing story from what I was told from people who watch the anime. Um, I just enjoyed the first three zero Evangelion figure they released. It's a diecast figure. I like the way it felt, the articulation on the figure. So I figured, hey, might as well just jump on this one to see what what's the difference between the two models. So let's get a close look. Let's get this review started. Dale. <laughs> Alright, so let's take a quick look at the box before we get the figure out from the box. So as you can see, Evangelion EVA 2. This is from the new theatrical edition, Evangelion Product Model 2. This is 3-0, the 3 -zero logo. Here's a quick picture of the actual, what do you want to call it, character, mech, design. And from here we have some more information, some more logos from the anime and the movie. The three zero under here we have all the information you have here. You have your little three zero Evangelion official hologram sticker there to make it you know that you know it's an official product, not a bootleg. There's more information there. Same information from the other side. Just the product name on top. There's a nice cool little design in the back. Like I said, many people who actually follow the anime will know more. It says we're here in God in his heaven. And read all straight, all straight with the world. It's kind of hard to read that part right there at the bottom. All right, yep, so here goes the figure. And let's get him out of his cocoon. I think I forgot to show when I was showing the box. You can actually open up the front. And it has a little window there. There's another logo here. That's a nice little cool design from the character we have here. And here it says a big box. Let's just put this this way. You can see everything that comes inside. A whole lot of accessories. So this may be a long one, fellas. And ladies. Right, so once we get this box open. Let's move the box out the way. This is what you get inside. And like I said before, there's a whole lot of things in there. So this may be a time-consuming one. Hopefully not. Oh. Well, Maybe the benefit that I don't know this character that, that good, so I don't know all the items that are in there. So I know I'm going to hear it from people in the comments, but hey, I don't mind listening to that stuff in the comments. It makes me a better reviewer and a better collector. So the day I don't go, the day I go without learning something new is a day wasted. So let's learn together, I guess. But first, before we get into the accessories, like always, I got to get the figure first. Let's get all this plastic off of him. Now, like I said before, he is die cast, so it does come well protected inside. I think it's, sometimes you gotta rip these things off. Let's throw that back in there. So it does come protected, you know, all the pieces. So basically the metal doesn't rub against each other. You don't have issue with paint chips. Let's go this good. I normally I take this off a little bit smoother, but since we're just looking at the figure now. So let's see the face scoped. You can see. From what I looked up before I did the review and before I bought the, the figure, it looks identical to what you see in the movie. You get the, little, you got the logos here. Let's see the other side, same thing logo. We'll go over articulation later when we see the figure in more detail. Now, it does come with a soft foam here to kind of protect the... I'm not sure what these are called, these little blades right here on his knees. From hitting the armor and painting some chip... Yeah, chipping some paint off of that. I'm sorry about that. Just learning all my words. Let's go down to the legs, get all the stuff off. Oh, there was a piece just flew right off, so that pegs right back into place. No problem. Down a little 
little bit. There we go. Pegs right into place. Let's see. Yep, that one's gonna fly off too. Okay, that's gonna happen. But these, like I said, they come back on easily, no problem. Just don't lose them. And don't let your cat get to them. Yeah, let's take the bottom and take a look at the figure with his feet. And like I say, he does have a good weight for him. For a skinny figure, he does have a good weight because it is fully die cast. All right, so it's going to take everything out real quick. I'm trying to debate if I should just take everything out or just talk through it as I go, but let's just go with the hands. Let's get everything out first. So he does come with two closed fist hands, infamous dap hands. Give me dap, bro. Give me dap. Let's get that out of there. Start putting things right here. Does come with the two, and it's like thumbs up fingers. Yeah, man. But this is more for like holding the weapons. Does come with two trigger hands. Then he comes with two open hands. You can do this kind of like for posing, putting a hand on the ground, or some kind of action or picking something up. Like I said, don't know any of these weapons or to figure too much, but he does come with his cannon. Looks like it's some kind of needle that goes in the front, like a blade. I'm not sure this makes it shoot different projectiles. Or if it's meant to be like this at all times. But this is a cool little piece. Nicely painted. Has a good feel to it. Doesn't feel cheap. Right, so we'll put that here. Then he does come with another gun. This is like some kind of harpoon type weapon yeah so yeah it does look like it has some kind of harpoons in there some kind of spikes that go in there I'm not sure if you have any spare ones that you can actually shoot up but if you look real close inside there you can actually see a little spike or harpoon in there this does articulate I want to say nope no it doesn't all right it's a nice little weapon oh so that's a big weapon does come with his two. Oh, let's do the knives first. Let's do the two knives. The other one I have posed with a knife, the other unit or model. So more likely I won't have this guy with the knives. These are nice. So you get two of these. Let's use the knives to get these weapons out. Then you get two of these cannons. It's like the typical machine gun. Brrr, brrr, stuff like that. Yeah, these are nice too. I like that little silver paint there. It makes it look metallic, but it's not metallic. It's plastic. But these are nice. Probably gonna have them posed with these. Dual wielding. All right, so we get those. And then, I know for a fact, these are the pods. This is basically an ejected pod, if I remember correctly. And this is the one that can go inside the cockpit at the back of the head. This is the one that you will in put insert into the figure. And this is the one that you would want to use as if it's ejecting out from the figure. Or shooting. A, you want to do some kind of fancy thing have it shooting out from the, the figure. Like I said, people, please correct me if I'm wrong on any of these things. I know I could have done the research. I should have done the research beforehand, but didn't do it. Now, these pieces, if I recall, these should be, looks like they might be part of, I'll look in the menu or the instructions, but this is part of the shoulder piece. I'll go over the instructions and find out exactly what these are. And then, 
you have these, you have a set of two of them. These are basically, this is, is this piece right here that you can swap out for a jet pack. So I kind of have them in the flight mode, flying stance or flying around. I'll get one open so you can take a look at it. There you go. It looks like this goes onto here, kind of like that. So maybe I haven't posed this one, turn it, change up the shoulders on this one compared to the, the model. The first model I have posed has a regular shoulders like this. So maybe just to make them look a little bit different, I'll probably have them posed up with this one. Yep, so you got two of them, so you know what you got there. All right. And then underneath, the warranty sheet is a cool thing that 30 does. If you have any issues with the figure within the first year of purchase, they should, they'll help you out with the warranty. And then you have the base. This is the base. I plug them to here, and like every other 30 figure they have out, out there, the Transformers and the other Evangelion. These are the, the nozzles that you plug into the base to have the umbilical cord. This is the cord that plugs into this. So you can have it attached to the figure. And on the other one, previously you had some kind of ejection piece that plugs in right here. And then you can have the umbilical cord coming in, plugging into right there. I do know for a fact in the, sh the anime, it is called an umbilical cord. So that I do know. All right, guys, so I'm just going to get everything out here and spread out a little better fashion so we can see everything. And I'll just go over everything real quick and then how to swap out the pieces. All right, so now I got to figure out all the accessories he comes with are laid out here perfectly. So you can get an idea and count of how many pieces he comes with. So I'll start from the bottom left-hand corner. That's basically going to be the base. This will be the base in the bottom left-hand corner right here. And then above that, we have the action stand that attaches to the top of the base. Then above the action stand on the far left over here, we have the two umbilical cables for the action base. The umbilical cable, which is the one on the top, on the bottom right, is the one you'll plug into the, the figure if you want him to just like, detached from the base. And then this one right here is the one that you would put in attached to the base if you want him having a cord attached to the base. Then of course you got the figure in the middle, you got all of his hands, now, on the bottom next to the hands, those are basically called the long entry plug and the short entry plug. These little things right here, those are the entry plugs. That's the long and short one. Then next to those, you have the progressive knives. And then on the far right, the two dual green machine guns or whatever you, sub machine guns or machine guns you call them. Those are called pallet rifles. So these two right here are pallet rifles. The one we have in the middle right here is a Evangelion Custom Super Electromagnetic Crossbow. See, so I knew it was some kind of piercing weapon. I knew it had something to do with the spikes inside there. So next to that, we have the Evangelion Custom Electric Discharge Portable Ordnance Thunder Spear, which is that cannon right there. And then above that, we have the tool, the dual shoulder jetpack pieces. So that's for the skydive unit. And then below these, so I was incorrect with these. These are not shoulder pieces. Those are basically two forearms aerodynamic fins. So when you use the skydive, so when you basically you would use these pieces right here, you would use that in the figure too to kind of make it a little more aerodynamic. All right, so let's just go quick over the articulation of the figure. And then I can basically talk about like how the accessories get put onto the figure. Once we get to that portion. All right, so let's take a look at the guy right here. Person of the hour. All right, so the head goes up and down. Not much there. You can go sideways. You can lean a little bit to the left. Lean a little bit to the right. You can get your dip and whip action going on here. Dip, whip, dip, whip, dip, whip. All right, so then the arms... Like I said, you got to be careful with this body because you don't want the pieces rubbing against each other too much. So you don't want to chip the paint. So one thing you could do is 
move this shoulder piece around to kind of avoid any rubbing. So the arms do go all the way up. They can go full 360, but they do go all the way up. They do, so, yep, there they go. They have like a little ratchet joint. So they do extend outward. Saw so a little strain there. You can see the little strain from there. A little stress mark there, but that's previously, probably from before, from the die cast rubbing against there. All right. You have the elbows. You get a full 90. Ooh, that's nice. So you kind of, if you had a sword his back, you could have him articulate pulling the sword out. That's nice. The joints are nice. They're kind of well hidden, so it doesn't look kind of awkward like the Figma joints. Let's put that back. Let's bring, like I said, be careful when you bring the pieces in. You don't want anything rubbing. So you might chip the paint. You know, just keep the arms. I want to try something. So you do get some butterfly action there too. That helps with the articulation. All right, so let's get the other side up more. And I want to show, you actually do get to open this little pod here. This is where you would put the two pieces in there. So this kind of opens up. Kind of pain in the butt to get open. I have to probably move the arms out the way. I'll come back to that. But yeah, there we go. So this will open up. And then you can actually put the entry plug into there. So you want to have it detect, like, shooting out. But for the meantime, since I'm going to have this figure displayed, I'm just going to keep the short one in there. Let's just keep that in there for all good old times. All right. So let's keep going with the articulation. He can move sideways. Not too much. As you can tell, like I said here, it's rubbing a little bit, so be careful with that. He can move sideways this way. You can move back that much. And then you can move forward. He gets a real good ab crunch. Ab days for him. Then the legs, like I said, once again, you want to be careful with the legs rubbing here. So you could put the legs out. So you can do the, let's see if you can do the Hogan boot. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, across the ropes, the big Hogan boot. You can do it. All right, so let's look at the other knee. So the knee bends, same thing, 90. That's, see, there's one good thing about these figures, man. For the price, the articulation you can get with these are beautiful. That's another reason why I picked these up. Like from the promo shots I've seen, the way they, they when they had that one one promo shot of him running, when you barely get any diecast figures that you can actually pose in a running pose and not have any problems with it. All right, so you get that on the feet. Let's go this one. You can get a full bend down. You can adjust the little, I'm gonna call it like ankle protector, whatever you wanna call this right here. It can adjust. You can go all the way up. I'm sorry if you guys hear any blow, like a air blow in the background, it's like they're cleaning our leaves. You do get toe articulation too, so you can bend the toe. So that's beautiful for if you ever get that running pose. You can have a pose running perfectly, no problem at all. Right, you do get to twist the legs here. And the same thing with this one. So you can have them basically running, boom. Kind of like some crazy running pose. You can even do the running man dance. Let's see, let's get that up there. So yep. Yeah. All right, and then uh, you don't get any articulation or pivot in the bicep but the hands could move at the wrist you get very good action there you can twist it the finger is like a soft gummy plastic so that's perfect or easy for when you want to equip the weapons so i will take a quick break now and i'm gonna get the weapons equipped so I'll give you guys an idea how they look in hand all right so real quick i did put the hands on the gun real quick. I'll, I'll demonstrate another one for you. 
But as you can see, they, they fit on there perfect. The trigger finger goes exactly on the trigger perfectly. They fit on fine, no no problem at all. Like I said, the good thing is they're like a hard, like a soft plastic, so they don't mess the paint up on the actual accessories or the figure. So I'll just show you the real quick on the weapon I'm gonna equip them with and the other weapon. So you basically take the trigger hand and all you really have to do is basically push the thumb up and then come in an angle. You just squeeze those fingers, open the fingers up a little bit more and then there you go, those fingers fit right there perfect. So as you can see, There you go. Now one other thing about this gun, this is the Thunder Spear. I forgot to show you this before. So I did show you this portion that this opens up right here. It makes it kind of like a spear at the tip, but then another function is this actually slides back. So this is the actual full display of the gun when you're trying to use the gun. Which is cool. I like the design of this. I'm gonna have them posed with basically I'm gonna have them dual wielding two weapons. I'm gonna have them using both of these the Thunder Spear and then the Pallet Rifle. And then I'll just show you real quick with the knives. So, for the knives, the best hand to use is this one right here. So, you can have them basically just slide it right into place. You can have it two ways. You can have it where basically the thumb is rubbing against the handle portion there for better stability when you're using the weapon. Or you can just slide it all the way down this way. Or even better, you can have them stepping downward, old Michael Myers style. So as you can see, the weapons fit in the hands perfectly, no problems at all. And then for the base, simple, just clip this in right here. You clip that there, then this portion, you bend it a little. You can extend this and see how far you push this down to adjust the level of this right here. So just plug it into the tab on the bottom. There you go. So then you pick the size you want. Once you're done, just clip this downward and it locks into place. And then you have the two bases, umbilical cable ports to be used. This is the one that would actually go onto the base. And if you can see, just some kind of gears on there. So you basically pick the level you want to put it at. I'm gonna put it up, down. You can adjust it from there. This can go up. You can set it, as you can hear, click. It stays locked in place. When you want to bring it down, just push this down and you can slide it, slide it down all the way. And that locks into place. And then when you don't want to have the umbilical cable attached onto the base, this portion, if you look at here, you have these two prongs, two silver prongs or gray prongs with the big black one. And if you look at the back of them right here, you'll see right there. So these basically go into place just like that and just slide into place. I'm not doing that right now because one, do, one thing I do recommend is if you're gonna use this, Make up your mind because there could be an issue. Because once you take put it in, they become real tight in there. So it's kind of hard to keep constantly removing it and putting the piece back in. So I'm fearful that if you keep doing this, you might strain some of the pieces. And when you pull it out, some of these plastic pieces might get broken and stay and stay in the in place in these holes over here. So it hasn't happened yet, but just from experience from the first figure, it could be an issue in the future. So I just like I said. If you're gonna use this piece, make sure you use it for sure. You know, not on a regular basis, use it once in a while. And if you're gonna use it, I would recommend just keep it in there if you're gonna use it. All right, and one other thing I want to go to articulation that I forgot about is he does twist sideways too. So he has some waist side to side also. And then the last piece actually here, we'll go over this real quick too. So supposedly the fin portions, which I'm gonna replace on mine anyways, you just take this out right here. You see those little two prongs, they attach it to there. So you wanna take the other ones that are more aerodynamic, you would put them in here. I just wanna make sure I got them the correct way. 
Let me just look real quick at the box. Just want to make sure. Not sure if this is the right way to do it. Yep, it's all right. So the correct way would be with the fin pointing downward. And just like that. And it clips right in. So this is when you want to use the backpack. And let's just go over the backpack real quick. Let's see if I can get that off. So the backpack basically is a peg right here. If you see the peg right here. This hole right there clips into it. So for now, we're going to use this one so let's attach this peg here and let's see if I can get this on there with no problems and one thing I do see already is maybe you have to bend the elbow so that fin doesn't get in the way of you putting this in so let's see if I can get that in there now There we go. So you'll hear a clip in place. And once you have it, you have them with a skydive mode on. And this moves also. These, do these move the power? Yep, so these do have articulation also, the jet booster portion. And sorry, I keep hitting the camera. This guy right here has articulation also. And you can adjust it. Also from here on the shoulder still with the articulation peg right there. If you gotta be careful, you're gonna equip this one. Like I said, make sure that the jet boosters don't hit that wing. So that may be one issue when you have it posed that way. Yeah, so you have all the accessories from the figure. You have this awesome figure. Maybe I should wait him, see how much he weighs. I'm pretty sure you could get the weight on the product description. But I'm enjoying the figure so far. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get him posed. I'm gonna get him equipped for everything, and then just do one uh, display with him of him everything equipped on him, and then I'll get a pose set up and then we'll do a fi uh, size comparison, and get my final thoughts. All right, collectors, I'm gonna do a quick size comparison. But before I do a size comparison, I just want to show a few things off real quick. So I was able to get him with his new jetpack piece on, and then the arm fins. I just want to let you guys know this is what basically it's going to look like once you have the other pieces off. They come off right here. There's the port for them. And then also, it was a little pain in the butt to get the hands on him due to the peg being rubber. And then basically when you grab the figure, when you grab the figure, he basically, since he's made out of metal, a lot of times like it rubs, like it's your hands, especially if you try to grip it, your hands do tend to basically slip on the metal pieces so that's one thing that you got to be careful when you try and swap out swap out the arms or the hands i'm sorry with the weapons so it's good the best way to do is kind of pose his elbow pose pose his elbow upwards and then you might have to take off the little fins here it's better to take these off real quick so that way uh when you take those off you don't have to worry about basically the pieces falling off as you're trying to um set them up and I'm trying to do anything else that we should be noted. The umbilical cord. So it does plug into here. This is the part that plugs into the back of the figure. And then the cord actually plugs into here. Now on my previous figure, I'm not sure if they fixed this. Yeah, they did fix it. All right. So on the first figure, this was a little bit bigger than what the hole was in there. So you have to actually get some wire cutters and kind of crimp that down a little bit to kind of fit in there perfect. But let's say they did fix that issue on this. So you no longer have to crimp this wire down if it's on there perfectly. So the cable goes into there and then this attaches to his back only when you want to have him off the base. If you want to have him on the base, then you need this piece right here. This piece attaches to the back of him. This piece attaches to the base. And then the umbilical cord slides it right into the bottom right there. So we have it just like that. All right, the fins, once you take the fins off, this is what the fins look like on the arm. And that is it. So let's go ahead and get a size comparison. Let's bring out some figures here. First, we'll bring out his counterpart. This is the Model 1. I'm going to keep him with the base so you get an idea of how big he is with the base. Or how big the base is next to him. So there you have the first version, the first release that came with him. With this, within this line. And that's the first model. 
on the base with the umbilical cord attached to them, as you can see here. The umbilical cord attached to the base and to there, and to his back. All right, so now that we have him there, let's go ahead and bring out another three zero figure. Let's bring out three zero snake eyes. You get an understanding of how big Snake Eyes is. So I'm just bring this down a little bit so we get the full body. There we go. Just a little bit more. There we go. Just like that. All right. So now we have Snake Eyes there. So we'll go ahead and bring in the three zero sound wave. And there he goes. So you can see how big he is compared to sound wave. Let's just get this just a little bit more. Get him there. Let's get him there. Get an idea of that. Let's bring this a little bit, a little bit over. And last but not least, let's get SH Figure Arts Godzilla 2000. The best Godzilla in the game. Let's go ahead and get this more over. Give me a better. And there we go. So there's a good size comparison of all the figures. We have the 3-0 Snake Eyes. We have the 3-0 Evangelia, the first model, which is the purple one. Then we have the new one in the back, model two, model B. And we have Shin Godzilla. I mean, I'm sorry, this is not Shin Godzilla, Godzilla 2000. And then last but not least, we got Soundwave back there. So it was a good size comparison. And let's go ahead and get him in the final pose and our final decision. Right, folks, so here we got him posed with the first model that was released from 3-0. And these two together are awesome, man. I can't tell you, like, there's so many ways you can pose them and they hold their pose perfectly. I just had to, I, as I was trying to get this pose, I thought like five other poses I can do with these two together. And I just, I started running out of time. I was like, you know what, let me just get something on there for now just to get the review done. Now this is... A set of figures that I'm really, really, really looking forward to messing around with and posing. I'm actually, maybe if I have my stream tonight, I'm going to have these guys posed in my display. Or actually just during the stream or anytime I have my next stream. These guys are posed. Oh man, they stuck to the, the amount of articulation you get in these figures. And their die cast. Let's not forget that. The fact that they're the die cast and you get so much movement and posability out of these figures. And for the price, if I recall... I think the first unit was 130. I paid uh, a little bit below that. The second one, the second unit, the one in the orange, is 100 and, was 140. So I know they're releasing. Um, so far they released one other model. I think it's the I forget which one it is. It's the one that's yellow. Like I said, I'm new to this whole this whole Evangelion series, so I don't know much just yet. But I'm gonna start learning more because just the figures alone caught my interest in the actual enemy. I know the enemy is older, but I may just give it a try anyways. But if you guys are really on the fence for these figures, I would say definitely, definitely pick these up. These are such a good, awesome figures for the price and the die cast is unbelievable. Um, the amount of like, detail on the paint is, is awesome too. The amount of accessories that Unit B comes with is awesome. Unit A has glow in the dark functionality. It's glows in the dark functionality, so uh, that's one thing that you actually put the light in it, the uh, blue parts. I mean, I'm sorry, the green parts glow in the dark. But these two together, man, I'm saying, I'm gonna say one more time, I keep repeating myself, but I just can't believe how awesome these came out. Definitely pick up these figures if you were on the fence, if you knew about this line and just wasn't sure if you should get these, these are definitely pickups. Even if you don't know about the line, I would still recommend these pickups. These are awesome, awesome, awesome die cast figures for the price and articulation you get with them and the amount of accessories. You can swap out accessories between the two units and just the base alone gives you the chance to pose them dynamically without having any issues with them falling off your shelf. These, you know, they can probably be paid, posed like outside of a display, just dust them off easily, but I don't regret my purchase for these, neither one of these. I'm looking forward to the next on the line. And if you like the video, please hit the subscribe, like, click that bell notification so you can get notified whenever my other reviews are coming up. And just have a go on everybody. Be safe.
Dale. Tequila. Like.